Oh, this is Alfonso Scamez and welcome to a new chapter of Indie Talk. Uh, today we are going to interview one of the considered fathers of the modern independent watchmaking with a long lasting experience with his brand, born in 1998. With a clear steampunk design and a very defined DNA, we have with us uh, Vianney Halter, its founder. Vianney, thank you for being with us. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Uh, thank you. Hello, uh, everybody. Okay, Biani, just uh, let's do as a first question, a short uh, uh, introduction of yourself to our viewers and followers. Who is uh, Biani Halter? Have you always uh, wanted to be a, a, a watchmaker? And uh, where did you study? Um, for the, the, the questions, um, uh, uh, yes, I uh, um, I, I wanted, but I don't know if I wanted to be a watchmaker or to become a watchmaker, but uh, uh, far as possible to remember and uh, and also around my family and people uh, who know me, I wanted uh, always uh, to, to be a watchmaker or to become a watchmaker. And uh, at the end now... Uh, I'm a watchmaker. Uh, I started to stu to study to study uh, watchmaking um, now 40, 46 years ago. Uh, it was in Paris at the um, watchmaking school uh, in Paris, but uh, the school disappeared now. Mm -hmm. um, it was not enough uh, people who want to learn watchmaking. And it was also uh, um, at the end of the 70s. And uh, at, the, uh, at this time, uh, watchmaking wa was in uh, big trouble uh, because uh, quartz uh, arrived on the market and uh, um, the Japanese people made a lot of uh, accurate watch uh, and very and very cheap watch, and uh, at the end, um, how work like uh, from the past, mechanically speaking, uh, was less and less. And uh, and um, I'm a watchmaker now uh, since uh, my seventies. Uh, uh, I started to work uh, for a, a shop uh, in uh, 1981, I think, or in 1980. And uh, since that, uh, I always um, work in this world. Uh, for ten more than 10 years in uh, antique uh, things, uh, vintage watches and uh, antique clocks, uh, and uh, since uh, the end of the eighties, uh, I'm uh, I I moved from Paris to Switzerland, and uh, from the beginning of the eighties uh, of the nineties, um, I I'm I'm working on contemporary. Uh, uh, watchmaking and uh, I, I participate to develop and to create uh, new things. Mm -hmm. Biani, what do you think made you create your own brand? Uh, the things it's uh, at the end I, I started my brand if you can uh, tell Vianney Alter, a brand. Uh, I, I started to put my name on watches by chance. It was not really a target and one um, one plan. Mm -hmm. um, in the, uh, in ninety six, uh, I, I was a supplier. Uh, I worked for different big brands, and uh, it was a uh, strong crisis in this time uh, in South Asiatic countries. And uh, the work I, I was uh, I was 
making or I was doing, um, it was uh, dedicated for uh, South Asiatic countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, customers uh, requested to postpone the delivery. And uh, and uh, for me, it was time to, to manage to look for different uh, work. And to do that, uh, I decided to create one watch, not to create a brand, but uh, to sell my work and my skill. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the, 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 this watch was the Antiqua, the Perpetual cal Calendar. And uh, and um, and I after I, I met when the watch was um, quite finished, I met uh, Philippe Dufour. And uh, he saw my work and he, he wanted from me to uh, join the AHCI group uh, of watchmakers uh, to exhibit in Basel. And uh, I thought, okay, it's a nice way to find customer, but customer to be supplier, to, to, to be uh, still a uh, subcontractor. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, in the same time, I, I met a, a private customer uh, who who were um, quite um, interested by the the perpetual calendar, and uh, it was the beginning of the Vianney Alter name in the watchmaking, because um, one of them, the customers. Um, uh, ordered one uh, perpetual uh, calendar and for me to work for him or for uh, uh, the brands uh, it was quite similar uh, to, re to reproduce one watch it was exactly the same things than to make watches for, uh, for a big, brand, big brand mm -hmm. and, uh, and the, the, the story and the um, my name on watches and my um, my career to create more and more pieces uh, with my name on the dial. Uh, it was by chance since this crisis. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Biani, by any chance, do you remember your first watch as a as a kid? Uh, my first watches, my first antiqua. Uh, I remember because I have still. No, I mean, when you were a kid, your first watch, uh, maybe it was like a oh, gift or something like that. My first this. watch, yes. Yes, yes, sorry. Yes, no. my first watch. Um, I think I got my first watch. Uh, my my first watch, it was in 80... No, in 76 or 77. And it was an uh, Yema. Mm -hmm. um, uh, simple watch, three hands, and uh, I think my parents or my family uh, gave me this watch, uh, my first. Uh, I remember I killed it very quickly, and um, but um, I I remember this name Yema, and mm -hmm. after that all my life when I saw uh, Yema watch. Um, is not a really um, uh, valuable watch or a, um, a very interesting product, but I remember this name because it was my first. Okay, great. Biani, what do you think is the DNA of the brand and your main influences? Because I know that Anti Jambier has influenced your creation a lot. Yeah, but um, the DNA, it's, it's di quite difficult to explain the DNA of uh, Vianney Alter. The DNA of Vianney Alter, the, uh, the uh, fundamental DNA is to be free mm -hmm. uh, and to do what uh, what I want. Uh, but uh, I was uh, very influenced by a uh, watchmaker and uh, Antti Janvier is wa one of them because um, uh, uh, a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of watchmakers from our past uh, influence my point of view, and because also I work on antique and uh, vintage things, um, I, I I learned a lot from uh, from the clocks and watchmaking history, 
and um, and uh, anti Janvier was an, one of them uh, very uh, impressive for me because he created some clocks uh, very straight and uh, with a uh, pure design uh, technical design and technical a complicated technical device in the clocks and uh, and at the end um, i visited the museum of the uh, of the art metier in paris the cnam uh, at this time it was the cnam conservatoire national um, des arts et métiers and it was one place where it it was possible to to see uh, a lot of clocks from uh, Janvier. And uh, also from Le, Le Roy, from uh, Bertou. Uh, uh, and uh, I visited also in, uh, in London, uh, the Greenwich, uh, to, to see the, the work of uh, Harrison and uh, maybe the most famous watchmaker uh, on earth. Uh, he, he gave one tool to conquest uh, our uh, planet and uh, for that it's uh, very impressive and uh, and um, yes uh, a lot of things inspire my point of view about watchmaking and the base of the dna it's uh, quite technical uh, even if i'm trying to create some design but always design with a uh, technological way to create uh, to create and to produce um, not only uh, to print dial. Um, uh, uh, Sometimes I print uh, dials, but if it's possible to engrave, uh, to make some shape different uh, using a technology, uh, using uh, technical architecture, I prefer this side than only uh, uh, basic design. Okay. Can we consider that you have a, a, a steampunk aesthetic and what does it mean to you? It's real? Yes, yes. Alors, now, now I agree this defi definition, but um, when the steampunk um, um, uh, movement, uh, I don't, yeah, um, uh, appeared, um, I did not know this world. Um, I discovered steampunk, uh, the steampunk point of view as steampunk uh, behavior uh, when I was invited in uh, Oxford Museum to be part for a steampunk uh, exhibition. And, uh, and I discovered uh, at this time my style uh, coming from the second part of the 19th century, the Victorian time. Um, for me, uh, the uh, the gold age of iron uh, for industry, delicate uh, machinery, uh, the top for watchmaking. Um, okay, I understood my my style uh, is quite steampunk, and uh, and uh, I I discovered this world, and uh, I met different people uh, working with this um, vision mm -hmm. and uh, I visited a watchmaker in the USA creating uh, very steampunk clocks. Um, I met also a guy making uh, lights, uh, steampunk lights and uh, and uh, people making uh, art, a uh, piece of art, completely steampunk. And at the end, uh, now I agree and uh, I quite uh, uh, happy uh, to uh, instinctively create a uh, watch with this style. Mm -hmm. Biani, the you, uh, you have said the Antiqua is your first creation and maybe it's one of the most iconic uh, designs of your brand. What is the story be behind the, the name and, uh, and does it reflect your philosophy? Yes, but the, the, the thing it was uh, at the beginning, I wanted to create one watch uh, uh, more uh, focused uh, on science fiction. And um, the first one was uh, contemporary. Mm -hmm. uh, it was quite a similar uh, design than the Antiqua, but the style was more futuristic. Uh, and uh, when the watch was made, 
I thought, okay, but it's maybe completely crazy and too futuristic. Uh, I have to become uh, to to become to come back uh, to my uh, original things: uh, technology, watchmaking, and what is fascinating me in watch me in the watch world or uh, clocks world. And um, uh, one part of the history very fascinating me is a marine chronometer and uh, astro uh, regu uh, astronomical regulator. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end, um, the marine chronometer, um, I was fascinated by Harrison, but also by Bertou, because it was quite living at the same time than uh, Harrison, a little bit after. And he created uh, the very big machine to use on the, uh, on the, um, on the boat. Uh, and I took some inspiration from this mind chronometer to create the Antiqua, uh, to imagine I have one marine chronometer on my wrist. Uh, and, and because also we live now in one world, in one time, in a time when it's possible to reduce uh, the volume of the um, clocks uh, to put on the wrist. I wanted to create this piece to remember this world and also to um, to have one complicated case and shape to have a lot of different finishing on it to show and to and to sell uh, this particular work uh, finishing quality of adjustment um, to imagine inside uh, for an, a perpetual calendar is not easy to to build it uh, and to 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 create one uh, mechanism uh, showing different information at different places on the case and uh, it was one complete um, um, uh, new situation to try to explain what I can do. Uh, what is my uh, possibility for the quality? And to explain, I'm I'm able to try to 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 work on the mechanism, but also on the case and on the design uh, for everything. And at the end, uh, the Antiqua uh, became from this different uh, this different way. Okay. But also recently, the last few years, you have also in, uh, introduced the deep space tourbillon that is a very complicated. It's a triple axis tourbillon. What inspired you to create that complex uh, watch? Uh, it, it was one point also in my life. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, it's interesting to have one style. Uh, like a Rolex, you know what is a Rolex. If he change a little bit the model, it's still a Rolex for for decades now. But um, one thing to be uh, connected with my origin and my uh, DNA, my uh, fundamental DNA, is to be free. And if I close my point of view about the design only for the... Um, uh, future anterior, past the future model, like uh, the Antiqua, the Trio, uh, the classic Janvier. Uh, um, it was too, too narrow for me uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to do something. And one very strong thing in my life, it was science fiction. Uh, I was fascinated by this world uh, since I, I, I went to my uh, watchmaking school. And, uh, and, um, by that, I discover a lot of different uh, point of view about uh, futuristic uh, things, and uh, one of of the whole uh, creation uh, of this is uh, Star Trek, and um, I watched Star Trek the original series in the eighties uh, when I was in uh, still in Paris. And after that, I moved in Switzerland and uh, I created the Antiqua, and blah, 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 blah. But uh, at the beginning of uh, 2011, I wanted to slow down my uh, work at the bench 
And um, I, I, I remember uh, my life is not only watchmaking, it was also uh, different uh, things. Uh, and science fiction was one part of, this, of that. And uh, I wanted to know what happened for the last 20 years. Because during 20 years, I didn't uh, uh, took attention about uh, this world. And uh, and th this world changed. And a lot of things was uh, written, uh, uh, pro produced for the, the movie, uh, in the movie. Um, and um, uh, I wanted to know what is the, the, this world. And I... I um, I um uh, I went to a shop, uh, a DVD seller, and uh, it was very clever about science fiction. And he advised me to watch the new series of Star Trek. And for me, it was an uh, an a very big surprise to know Star Trek was uh, produced again with a different context, but with the same philosophy. And um, okay. I started to watch a new series uh, called Deep Space Nine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I watched uh, seven years uh, of production in six months. Uh, if, every day, maybe three episodes um, and uh, maybe uh, almost two hours of Deep Space Nine every day. And um, after that, I went to sleep. Uh, and at, at the end, it was so dense. Then I started to dream Deep Space Nine during the night, during my sleeping time. And inside the dream, I notice I uh, I notice some something in this uh, world, Deep Space Nine world, and I saw one tool, one uh, machine, mm -hmm. very close to the deep deep space tourbillon. And I spent one year to go to sleep to collect information to come back from my uh, sleeping time uh, with details to create one watch. And the deep space uh, tourbillon uh, appeared only from the dream, my dream, dreams. Uh, and the target was to reproduce the tool I saw in the ship where I was living some episode of Deep Space Nine. And uh, the, the tool was if you travel very far in space, um, you have to remember what is your condition on Earth in the solar system, on our galaxy. Because somewhere far away, um, the condition maybe will change. And to remember what you, from where you are coming, um, it was a tool. And the tool was this, um, this uh, piece. And uh, the device, technical device, moving in three dimension, uh, the material three dimension, it was a three axis tourbillon. To remember our condition, it's a three uh, dimension. And the fourth dimension, the time around. Mm -hmm. And it's why the um, concept and the design of the watch was created like the deep space um, tourbillon. The three axis in the middle, very um uh, in front of the watch to remember we are in three dimension and the time around us and the watch was at the end what i it was for the marine chronometer when the people wanted to cross earth they travel with the marine chronometer on board to remember what time it was at the uh, harbor departure. And depending the place and the observation with the sun and the horizon, uh, it was possible to know where you are mm -hmm. and what you are on Earth because you remember your uh, departure place. And uh, the deep space tourbillon was... Um, this point of view, and I wanted to change something from the style and for the um, uh, for the point of view to show the um, technical architecture to uh, to involve and to improve also my uh, my uh, point of view about watchmaking. 
Mm -hmm. I was also fascinated with the original series of Star Trek. Vianney, uh, we are getting old. We are getting old. <laughs> okay, then uh, you are one, as, as I said before, you are considered one of the fathers of the modern independent watchmaking. What do you think are the, the pros and the cons of being an independent brand? Uh, you, uh, what you mean about independent brand, uh, uh, the new one or? Uh... No, I mean that uh, I think that there are several good things about uh, being independent, that you have more freedom. You are not part of a big group uh, with uh, the importance of finance and uh, and balance sheets. Uh, I, that's for me the good things and that you are closer to, the, to your clients. But also there are cons about you don't have the the, the the money that the big group had yes it's it's difficult to answer this question because it, it depends what you think um fundamentally in, in for yourself mm -hmm. um for us for myself it was quite impossible to be different than an independent watchmaker and uh and uh and to at the end to work for myself um typically for one point you you told uh, it's a connection with a final customer i'm working at my bench i spend my life uh, this it's a no return uh, life it's only cons consuming life and uh, i i like to know for who i'm spending my life even if it's to collect some money it's better to have an uh, good customer and uh, good money and uh, to survive and to continue but um, it's always difficult also to um, to survive uh, because sometimes uh, watchmaking it's at the top and uh, sometimes it's uh, at the bottom um, and sometimes uh, under the bottom mm -hmm. and uh, and it's not easy to to manage uh, to to keep your tool, your workshop, your uh, your colleagues, uh, everybody working for you uh, to to save uh, also some suppliers. Uh, when is a crisis in watchmaking, suppliers disappeared also, and after that you have to look again uh, to find another one with a nice uh, quality, uh, a correct price. And you spend time for that also. It's not only to spend time at the bench. Uh, when you are alone, maybe you spend time at the bench, but uh, you have also to travel. Uh, sometimes it's nice. Sometimes it's very tiring. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know exactly. Uh, and, and I understand also someone working for a big brand uh, because it's more uh, comfortable. The the a big brand have an uh, administration to manage uh, things, to to find the customer, to um, to deal with the customer, to collect this money, to pay salaries, and uh, yeah. And for some people, when you want to be watchmaker, uh, it's nice to be uh, under the bench, mm -hmm. not uh, in the plane to look for some money. Uh, and uh, at the end, yeah, I, I, it, it depends uh, what you are and what is your mind. And um, for some people, it's nice to be free and to be independent. For some other one, it's better to be uh, employed, employed in, in the big factory uh, and maybe uh, to find the right place in the big factory to have an uh, maybe nice department or uh, for the concept uh, construction or to to make very rare pieces or things like this. And for some of the, of uh, other one, uh, typically now uh, it's an opportunity to make money. Uh, you arrive on the market very powerful. You make a watch quickly, made by some suppliers, and you create a margin, and you make quickly some money. You have everything in this world now, but uh, for me, the best it's to to save my uh, 
my small world and to keep my uh, colleagues uh, close to me to continue to to survive and to create things okay Vianney, I think that we met for the first time 20 years ago when uh, we had the, the independent workshop here in, in Madrid uh, with your brand. Do you think that now the the the, the vision and the, the, the new uh, clients uh, have more interest in independent brands nowadays than those years? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, um, a lot of things changed uh, since these 20 years. Um, also, the, the first one, uh, the collectors, uh, um, a, a lot of them disappeared because uh, life is going. And I met at this time a lot of people who had more than 60, uh, maybe more than 70 now uh, people are very old and I uh, I have a lot of customers who pass away but his life and um, also uh, since this time uh, internet is more and more an, uh, uh, an uh, deep tool for everybody everyone is connected uh, on earth for uh what you want if you know if you know how to look and how to search on this world for some details you can find and mm -hmm. uh and uh, at the end uh, the new generation uh maybe by the heritage of the old customers uh got more uh, information um, more possibility to learn about uh, uh, watch watches, watchmaking, uh, quality, uh, rarity, uh, production, industry. And um, now I'm getting old and old, but I'm, I meet more and more young people very fascinated by this world. And uh, and uh, I think the market, the the market, the final market, the customers market, the true market, uh, it's deeper and deeper and more uh, uh, more knowledgeable now than twenty years ago, and uh, and uh, now every uh, everyone can uh, can understand what is a, a watch. What is a cheap watch, expensive watch, quality watch, uh, um, low quality, high quality? N now it's quite very easy, and you have a lot of blogs and a lot of people sharing, a lot of clubs, um, and and uh, all the things created uh, created an, a strong value for mm -hmm. this particular work. And particularly for the independent watchmaker, uh, but, and now you have a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Twenty years ago, it was not so much, and uh, it was also the problem when you are alone. No one uh, can can discover you, but when you have plenty of uh, of watch independent watchmaker, after that you can discover one and through this one you can discover another one and uh, also uh, uh, you 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 can understand is not only the watch is also uh, deeper and the customer now uh, wants to know who is behind how he proceed to create that how he is making that and i want to meet uh, the watchmaker, the guy, uh, and then uh, yes, the market changed a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's clear that your watches have a, a clear aesthetic, and if you see a watch, uh, you know perfectly that you are the the creator of the watch. But you have a, another collection; is called Grand Voyage. Why it's so different? Do you still producing those watches? Yes, uh, I, I'm not uh, pushing it uh, to sell, but um, it was one dream. Uh, um, 
I became from one very simple world. Uh, my father was a uh, uh, train driver. He was, uh, when he started in his life, it was uh, uh, working on the steam uh, train and it was a chauffeur, mm. uh, the guy taking the material to eat the machine. And after that, he became the driver. And after that, he became the electric train driver. And um, I was, I grew in this world and maybe one of my point of view for the technology um, uh, uh, came from that. A steam train, steampunk world, mm -hmm. um, um, the travel, the possibility to be free with that and uh, technology changing, uh, train faster and faster, more precise. And at the end, I wanted to to pay tribute to my father or to my origin. And I wanted to create one watch uh, with the um, last technology for watch making, a quartz technology, the most accurate at the end, um, um, uh, private device with one style from the, um, the French train uh, company. And uh, I met the guy, he drew the clocks for the plat French platform train. And um, the feeling was quite uh, nice with him. And we decided to create one watch inspired by the um, Train, uh, French train story and by my origin. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end, um, it's another world, but it's also one world I can produce things. I can imagine a shape for that. I can adapt a point of view and I can, I can um, uh, pay tribute for the whole progress in the, in the target to make accurate device. And at the end, you have a uh, quartz watch, completely autonome because it's self-winding. You have no battery inside. Um, you can put in the troll for years, for decades. And maybe once you take it and uh, you move a little bit, oh, it's, it's still working. Like uh, you discover a pocket watch uh, in uh, in some furniture in the old flat or old house, and uh, yes, for for me it was one um, one I don't know exactly to say in English, but a uh, clin d'œil uh, for mm -hmm. uh, yeah. watchmaking, uh, my uh, past and uh, my origin and and uh, and the world around me. Okay. Uh, Vianney, what's your total production of watches per year? In 2020, more, more I, made, uh, I zero. made zero watch. Yeah, 20. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing. Yeah. Uh, in 20, I can spend my time uh, uh, for uh, to make the um, deep space resonance. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a uh, heavy work. But um, the most important uh, product uh, 2015, years ago it was almost 100 uh, pieces a year and maybe last year i produce around uh, 25 30 pieces okay great uh the other day i was interviewing manuel Emch from uh, louis erard and you have collaborated with with them with an um, i love the the watch with an amazing watch uh what are you when you are, when you collaborate with someone what are you looking for Alors, um, collaboration for me it's one uh, it's one um, very important things because at the beginning I was not a brand I was not a Vianney Alter uh, watchmaker uh, my work and uh, my uh, my way to survive and to make money it was to work for the other and at the end uh, for a lot of them it was a nice story a nice uh, journey. And um, I, I I remember it was nice to work for some of uh, different people. 
because it was possible also for me to be uh, connected with the other and different point of view and different uh, requests. And um, I like to collaborate with people because it's possible to, um, it's one way for me to bend uh, what I think about everything. I have to be uh, to to still be connected with the other, to follow my time, to follow what is happening uh, uh, in the human human's uh, journey, and um, and um, and when the, I met uh, the team uh, from We Are, uh, it was a young team, um, nice team, uh, very. Uh, Attentive, uh, dynamic, uh, with a uh, nice point of view about uh, work and job, not only to make money, but to be happy also during this time. You create uh, financial uh, uh, resource to survive, but it's not only that, it's also to create things and to and to share one point of view and um, there was enough kind to uh, convince me to to try something with them and uh, and it was a, a right uh, decision because uh, a good decision because uh, uh, it was an, a nice um, part partnership and a connection between uh, uh, the team from We Are and my team, uh, Vienna Alter, and uh, and and I like uh, to continue to be enough open-minded to work with the other. Mm -hmm. uh, Bienny, winning a prize at the GPHG, uh, what did it mean to you? It gives you more awareness for for new clients, it recognition from your peers, from your colleagues in the watch sector. It puts you maybe more pressure to keep on uh, working at that high level of the of those prices. I don't know. I'm uh, quite. Um, uh, I feel quite strange with that. Uh, okay, at the end, I got three prizes: um, Harry Winston, yeah. Best Watchmaker, and the Deep Space Tourbillon. Okay, it was nice. But I don't know if uh, something. Uh, I don't have uh, some deep proof uh, from these things. Uh, I got some customer or uh, these words uh, uh, push me further or uh, higher than mm -hmm. before. Uh, and it's why at the end, since the deep space uh, tourbillon, I didn't, uh, I didn't want uh, to to participate anymore uh, for my work because mm -hmm. at the end, uh, I'm balanced in two worlds. Uh, uh, people know my work now. I'm uh, more than sixty years old. Uh, if I have to continue to collect some awards and some prize to 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 uh, uh, to convince the people around me, I think the these people is not the right one I want to meet. Um, and uh, and also uh, now you arrive uh, typically uh, uh, if you look what happened. For the last uh, GPAG, you arrive uh, from nowhere with one work, and uh, oh, you get one prize. No one's know who you are, your um, your behavior, your um, uh, your um, ha, ha, I I forgot the name in English. Um, how you connect with the other and if you are sincere or if you are only focused for some different target uh, ah, yeah for me it's strange like you 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 remember that 20 years ago or more than 20 years ago um one guy in geneva advised me to to participate for the antiqua mm -hmm. 
the Antiqua didn't uh, uh, cross the first uh, yeah. the first um, um, elections. Uh, huh? Yeah. Selections, uh, and uh, now everyone it's okay to say, uh, "Oh, the Antiqua was an uh, iconic watch," and blah 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 blah. Okay, the Antiqua was twenty years ago. The man the mentality was different. The connection in the GPHG also was not so fair and was uh, quite not clear. Mm -hmm. And um, and I understand that uh, it's always the political things or um, uh, to support the ones more than another one. But I think for me, it's okay. I don't have to prove something more yeah. anymore. It's mm. okay. If some customer wants to follow my work, he can follow, he can visit me and he can order the watch. And uh, But if uh, the customers wants only to be convinced because you get an award at the Grand Prix, uh, even if you are a new one coming from nowhere, okay, why not? But uh, I think I have enough customer, uh, yeah. uh, intelligent and clever customer to avoid this world. Yeah. Uh, Biani, do you produce your own calibers? And for example, like the triple axis tourbillon that is very complicated wa uh, watch and caliber, how much time could it take you from the from the, the, the first uh, draw in the piece of paper till the caliber is completely developed? And working <laughs> is is long, yeah. For the for the for example, for the deep space uh, tourbillon, it took uh, it took three years, around three years. And um, uh, the first one I made it was a gold file uh, oh, piece, yeah. and I spent uh, two years to to develop the caliber, and uh, and after that, uh, for the trio, it's an uh, own caliber also. Based on the uh, on the golf file, mm -hmm. but it took two years again to to develop and to 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 test and to um, uh, to change things. Also, it is not so easy. Uh, if you want to have one very uh, uh, efficient caliber. Is not like this. Uh, oh, okay, I, I, now I stay for uh, three months behind the computer and I drew I drew I draw the caliber and after I go on the machinery and I produce the piece is not so easy and it's not so fast. It takes time. You can produce things very quickly but um, it depends also what you want to what is the target. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to create one caliber because you have one point of view for the design, for the power reserve, for the accuracy, uh, for the possibility to have complication, you have to spend time to um, uh, to manage the best uh, the best um, things you imagine for yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, it's it takes time and it's uh, complicated. Yeah, uh, considering that you have had your own brand for almost more than twenty five years. How do you see the future? What are your plans for the future with uh, with your brand? Um, I plan to be uh, retired uh, very soon. Uh, no, no, I joke. <laughs> I, I, oh, you have to have the time to enjoy your life. <laughs> yes, but I mean joy at the bench. Uh, sometimes it's quite boring, but uh, sometimes it's very... Uh, very nice because it was my dream all my life and uh, now for the next 10 years if I can survive uh, I will imagine I I will be still at the bench I will have some new model to create uh, I have a new customer to discover I have to travel a little bit to meet people around Earth and uh, and uh, and if it's, if I can survive twenty years, uh, maybe I will continue that for the next twenty years, um, and more if it's possible. Um, yeah. Maybe 
uh, I will manage to work less at uh, workshop because uh, I'm still working a lot. Uh, yeah. Even if I thought uh, some years ago, slow down on work. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it was a lot of things to create. Uh, deep space resonance, uh, la resonance, uh, uh, la art deco. Uh, and I'm working for different pieces and I'm working also for different collaboration. And uh, it takes time. It takes to to imagine uh, design, to imagine uh, uh, machine te technology. And yeah, I, I like this. And uh, yeah, maybe I will slow down. Uh, I I will manage to uh, to spend more time on my antique uh, collection uh, because I have a lot of antique things and uh, I want to maybe to spend a, some time on it uh, to remember also from where I'm coming mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, I don't uh, plan to stop uh, soon. Okay. Then, uh, Vianney, do you maintain your... I know that you have another hobby that it was to fly with your vintage uh, plane. Do you still have it? Yeah, wow, it's a vintage. Uh, yeah, it's coming vintage because uh, it was built in... Two th Alors, the first one, the Cessna, it was built in 61. And I'm still uh, flying with it. Uh, not enough, but uh, I try to fly with uh, sometime. And um, the second one, the experimental, mm. it was built in 2008, and uh, I'm still working on it, on it because now for the last 10 years it didn't flew, uh, and and uh, it didn't fly or it didn't mm. flew, mm. and I want to spend some time on it again to fly because a, a plane it's not to store in the yeah. in the hangar, it's mm. uh, to Put it yes, yeah. yeah. Biani, uh, what are your more important uh, markets right now, considering that you have a, a, a short production of watches? Uh, like uh, my uh, my first uh, success, uh, now it's uh, in the USA. Uh, more than 50% of the pieces are uh, going in the USA. But uh, I'm selling also pieces in China mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, in around uh, Hong Kong, uh, uh, Asian and, uh, market, South no? Asiatic. Yeah. Sorry, A Asian market. Yes, but less than fifteen years ago. Yeah, fifteen years ago, I sold in South Asiatic countries. Uh, more than 80% of my product. Mm -hmm. and now it's uh, it's uh, maybe 20, 25% uh, and 50 in the, the USA and some other place around uh, hers. Uh, I sold some pieces uh, in Europe, um, um, also in Japan, but is quite not a lot. It's yeah. sometimes uh, two, three pieces in Europe, one pieces in Japan. Uh, uh, and at the end, yes, the first main market, it's uh, still the USA. Okay, great. My last question is a question that I do to all the my interviewees, and it's if you were not wearing a Vianney Halter watch, which brand and model would you wear? Oh, it's difficult because um, I like to wear a lot of different watches. Um, uh, for years, I I wore I wore Le uh, Lecoultre watch. Uh, not a long time ago, I wore a uh, Cari Boutilainen watch. Yes, uh, he bought uh, some of my work. It's nice to wear to wear one of of them yeah for and, sure um, yeah and um, and yes some colleagues uh you, independent watchmaker if i can wear it 
I, I wear, but uh, it's not easy to find one or, uh, but um, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not easy to, because I'm not focused on one thing. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes I focus on from where the watch is coming. Uh, what is the watch? The complication. Uh, typically, if he, if I can wear a uh, Philippe Dufour watch, I prefer to wear a uh, grand sonnerie mm -hmm. uh, than uh, simplicity. Mm -hmm. Or maybe uh, the duality. Uh, why not? It will be. It will have been very nice to have one uh, duality at my wrist. But now it's too expensive. <laughs> but yes. um, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy for that. But. Yes, um, uh, some of my colleagues in the, the watchmaker I know uh, making very nice pieces. Uh, if I can wear it, uh, I will. But uh, but it's always uh, the problem. Uh, right now, I'm wearing uh, uh, quite only my product. Uh, my product. I'm wearing the services to check if my uh, service is uh, right or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm wearing a lot of my uh, deep space resonance because uh, deep space resonance was uh, worn by uh, Captain Kirk and he went in space with this piece. And, and at the end, the buckle, it's complete. Mm -hmm. the, the circle, it's connected because... Uh, Years ago, I was fascinated by this, and uh, now I'm wearing one watch uh, flying in space at the Captain Kirk Bliss. It's uh, maybe the best from the best watch for me. Yeah. Okay, Biani, it has been a real pleasure to have you uh, with us at Indie Talks. Thank you so much for being so kind. And as Thank you said, you for your lo long life and prosper. Live long and prosper. Thank you so much. Take care.